The Warriors win ugly in Indiana. I'll break down the three reasons why they were able to get the W and what I'm concerned about moving forward. And then we'll talk about Steph Curry finally, mercifully breaking the all-time three-point record. It should happen Tuesday in New York, the Mecca of basketball, whatever the hell you want to call it, Madison Square Garden. It's an arena in the middle of the city, whatever. I'm Dieter Kurtenbach. This is Locked On Warriors. Let's boogie. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? Dieter Curtin back here. Welcome to Locked On Warriors, and thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. This episode is brought to you by Truebill. Truebill is the new app that allows you to save money by helping you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't want or need. You can even negotiate better deals on those you want To keep this Steph Curry guy, he's a keeper. 26 points, Warriors win 102-100. And while Curry knocked down a couple of three-pointers in this game, the record will have to wait until Tuesday at the Garden. Now, the tricky part of all of this, according to multiple outlets, I believe first starting with Marcus Thompson and Anthony Slater and and eventually trickling its way to Monty Poole and even my phone, is that the Warriors are stuck in Indianapolis on a Monday night. And as lovely as I'm sure Indianapolis can be, I'm pretty sure they'd rather be in New York. Now, there is no rule prohibiting day of travel in the NBA, but if the Warriors are to play on Tuesday against the Knicks, they're going to be doing it after they fly in the morning of, and we'll see what that does to this team overall. Steve Kerr joked after this 102-100 win over the Indiana Pacers that he was going to rest Steph on Tuesday, that might be a more realistic option given the travel arrangements that have all fallen apart because of some mechanical issues on the runway at Indianapolis. So let's hope the Warriors plane gets back into full service ASAP. Doesn't sound like they're going to be in New York anytime soon, though. And as someone who's covered a lot of games in a lot of different cities, let me tell you, Uh, I'm not even close to, I'm exerting a tenth of 1% uh, of what you need physically to get through an NBA game. I mean, infinitesimally small amount of energy to just cover and write about a game. And I've done plenty of games where I have flown in the morning of, and let me tell you, it is a drag once you get to uh, about the second quarter and you find those dog minutes of the game, man, it's tough. Uh, let's talk about this game that the Warriors played on Monday, though. We will break down everything that the Warriors are going to do on Tuesday in New York. Fingers crossed. Uh, this was a, this was a nasty one. This was one where Indiana was taking it to the dubs early, and uh, Demonis Sabonis was having a really great game. Malcolm Brogdon, who just always seems to have a great game against the Warriors because he's a really excellent player, was controlling the pace. Uh, excellent defense on both sides. You have Karis LeVert with his little nasty. He, he's a nasty little two guard, man. I, I don't really know how else to describe him, but he's willing to really work his way into to funky spots on the floor. And he's a really talented player. I, I it stuns me. I, I know that we were just paratrooping in here, uh, apparently for an extra night for the Golden State Warriors. But I, it, it really does stun me how the Pacers, with this much talent and a positive point differential, last time I checked are a team that's considering blowing it up. It just seems like a team that just hasn't had good luck this year, hence their record. But overall, they're an extremely talented team. And uh, if anything, they're stuck in the middle. They're they're stuck in sort of that band of non-contenders but playoff teams. And this year, as of right now, at least not in the playoff picture in a very tight Eastern Conference. But uh, that's an exceptionally talented team. And if they're going to blow it up, uh, I think a lot of teams around the NBA should be extremely interested in more pieces than just a Miles Turner and certainly a Sabonis. Brogdon, uh, I, I presume they would want to build around Lavert. I think they have some really nice bench players. Th- this Pacers team, uh, I know our, our man Cyrus was saying yesterday that they were a squad that he was expecting a blowout with. That line, four points. Yeah, well, tough break for Cyrus, by the way. He bet the house on it, so he's going to be needing to do a whole lot more of these shows in the days to come. But uh, 
Uh, I, I, I was never buying into it just on the basis of the talent of the Indiana Pacers and the fact that it was a full house in Indiana, which is something that uh, I've heard. And this is the word on the street down in Indianapolis. That hasn't happened since opening night. And it was mostly Warriors fans, according to uh, reports from the field. And that that is always going to rile up the home team just a little bit more, knowing that they're kind of going up against some some adversaries in the crowd and on the court. And the Pacers brought it early. And the Warriors, listen, it, they were fine. But, you know, Sabonis, 12 of 17 from the floor, uh, only shot one three, which is usually a great sign for him and that he's not – overly doing it from the outside. He's attacking. He's driving to the perimeter. Uh, 11 rebounds. Miles Turner had 10 rebounds. A couple of nasty blocks. That guy can really protect the rim, uh, but only six points in 35 minutes. One of 10 from the floor. He was somebody who spent a lot of time outside the three-point line. Shot six threes. Missed them all. And the Warriors were very fortunate on that. Uh, Pacers shot seven for 30 from beyond the arc. Now, the Warriors... This is now the third game in a row where they have just been part, just laying bricks, just laying bricks. Uh, eight of 30 from beyond the arc. Wardell knocking down five of those eight. It is it is a tough scene happening here. Damian Lee can't buy one. Uh, Otto Porter couldn't get one tonight. Uh, Andrew Wiggins was 0 for 3 from beyond the arc. Draymond missed one. Jordan Poole, 1 for 4. I mean, it was the Steph show. And this is something that... We've talked about over the last couple of days as this record, this this record that Chef's gonna uh, Steph's gonna shatter by hundreds, thousands. Um, this weird moment in time is a, is upon us. Like he's chucking, and there's not a problem with that because when the moments were necessary for him to just make a play, he did that. And his layup late in the game was huge. And let's talk for a second now about Kavon Looney, who had an absolutely monster game and was without question, in my estimation, the player of the game. I know Sabonis gave him the business a little bit, but 7 of 10 from the floor, 14 points, 8 boards, 3 assists, set every every screen you could possibly ask for him, freed up Curry a bunch of times, I thought was really stout on the defensive end for most of the game, not all, but most of the game, uh, plus 10 in this contest, him and Curry plus 10, plus 17. They had a nice thing going. He's closing, Looney was, and he knocked down one of the biggest shots, if not the biggest shot of his NBA career, the eventual game winner. There was also a fun moment in this game where the Warriors have the ball. They're up to Gary Payton the second had just done an incredible job on the defensive end. They give the ball to Karis LeVert at the top of the key, and he tried to dribble around Gary Payton the second. Yeah, it didn't go well. He tripped, he fell, the ball went out of bounds. I initially thought it was a foul. I was glad that I was wrong because that would have made me really question a lot of things about the current state of the NBA and perhaps rigging. I don't know. I, I might have busted out an Aisha Curry tweet as, after all that. It was such great defense, and it deserved to be rewarded. It was rewarded immensely. The Warriors get the ball. They have the lead. The Pacers are, are just in a situation where they have no timeouts. They're going to have to foul twice. It's a hot mess. It's a hot mess of a situation for Indiana. The game is effectively over. They're able to get Draymond Green to call you know, one of the final timeouts for the Warriors, if not the final timeout for the Warriors, as to avoid a five-second call. And then Draymond Green, we're going to say purposefully, because we, we stand Draymond Green and his basketball IQ here on the new Locked On Warriors podcast, but my goodness, uh, a, a deliberate turnover, his third of the game, to win it, essentially, for the Warriors. If you can't get the ball inbounds, just get the ball, have it touch somebody, get the clock starting with about 2.5 seconds left. They're 94 feet away. If you want to knock in a three from 90-something feet, be my guest. It'd be better to have Steph Curry going to the line. It'd be better to have Jordan Poole going to the line, sure. But no one's expecting a pass directly to the opposition and uh, I'm just going to say it. I, I think that was one of the more clever plays if it was indeed Draymond Green's intent. And, and again, I, I will remain willfully ignorant so that I can continue to believe that it was one of the cooler plays Draymond's made in a long time. It was an ugly win. There, there's no two ways about it. It was an ugly win. It was, oh, it was, oh, it was nasty to watch. In the first half, it opened up a little bit in the second half. Warriors able to work some pace coming out of halftime. But this was just another 
uninspiring game from Golden State. They have not been themselves since this Curry three-point record sort of got put on the docket, and that's why I'm so excited for this thing to just finally be over. Not only do I have a column sitting in the chamber, but also uh, just because I'd like to see the Warriors try to actually play basketball, their style of basketball, a very beautiful brand of basketball once again. Now, again, they're stuck in uh, Indianapolis, at least at the time of recording here. They will be, in, in theory, according to the information that we currently have, traveling to New York the day of the game. That's not the shortest flight in the world. I mean, it's not like we're going from Philly to New York and it's a little 10-minute puddle jump. In Indianapolis, Eastern time zone, but it's right up on the edge. Uh, it's much closer to Chicago, and I, we don't need to do the whole geography lesson. Uh, so this is going to be tricky, and I, I again – would not be stunned, surprised, but not stunned if Steph Curry misses this game, uh, even though Adam Silver and TNT and everybody involved just has to be absolutely thrilled that he will break the record. He's two away, two away from breaking the record, uh, breaking the record at Madison Square Garden. It's a big deal for some people. It seems like it's a big deal for Steph. Uh, it's certainly better than doing it at whatever the hell they're calling the field house in downtown Indianapolis or, um, you know, the new Boston Garden, which is named after some bank or something. This is why the Warriors, by the way, wanted to do it at home. They wanted to get this record at home. They wanted 16 in one game because, it, I don't know, it, it just feels more appropriate to do it at home. I guess if you had to choose somewhere else, Madison Square Garden, the one time you're there all year, uh, national TV against a Knicks team that will probably be wearing a nasty, nasty jersey. Um, why can't you just wear the whites? Why can't you just wear the blues? Like, I, I love the alternate jerseys. I just don't love the Knicks alternate jerseys. And they are, oh, they're ugly. Uh, so fingers crossed, classic uniform game. Warriors get enough sleep, take a big old nap, no shoot around, no, nothing like that. Maybe they'll figure it out. Steph Curry comes out, guns, and we see what happens. Maybe the Warriors just turn this game in after Steph gets the record. It seems as if they've been flirting with that kind of thing for quite a minute now. Uh, listen, Steph still has to get two more, uh, and then he's going to keep making threes. He's just going to keep making threes because that's what Steph Curry does. You know what companies do when you sign up for a subscription? They make it hard for you to cancel it because that's their system. They just want to keep the money flowing in. This business scam is out to get you, and don't let these greedy corporations pocket your money. Download Truebill to take control of your subscriptions. Truebill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't need, want, or simply forgot about. On average, people save up to $720 a year. That's a lot of cash with Truebill. Because companies make subscriptions so difficult to cancel, Truebill makes it so incredibly simple. Problem, solution. Here you go. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. And your Truebill concierge is there when you need them to cancel the unwanted subscriptions so you don't have to. Don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash LockedOnMBA. Go right now. That's Truebill.com slash LockedOnMBA. It could save you thousands a year. The average saving, $720 a year. Truebill.com slash LockedOnMBA. I also want to tell you all about Stance. Founded in 2009, Stance Apparel represents a radical reinvention of socks. You thought that socks, you thought you knew what was going on with socks? You thought you were just going down to Costco and buying some socks? No. Stance, radical reinvention. And they're also reinventing underwear and active apparel. Their focus is on comfort, quality, and creativity. It's that last thing that really separates Stance from the rest. They bring an atypical aesthetic alongside some of pop culture's hottest collaborators for the ultimate in style and self-expression. You want some funky socks? Stance has got you covered. Everything you wear should be a direct extension of who you are and how you feel. And boy, do these socks underwear and active wear feel great. They got a lot of cool designs on these stance socks. NBA players are wearing them all the time. I was out on the golf course the other day. Two of my partners in my foursome were rocking stance socks. They had to bring it for the Santa scramble, uh, but they got Wu-Tang Clan, Batman, the Goonies, Star Wars, The Office, Harry Potter, Disney, Marvel, Bob Marley, Major League Baseball, the NBA, Pixar, whatever you can think of in popular culture and sports, Stance is going to have it printed in a very fine quality on their stuff. Stamp, Stance believes that perfect fit 
matters more than fitting in, though you're probably going to want to fit in by getting some cool socks. Those who feel do, oh my goodness, those who feel good, do good. Easy for me to say. Go see for yourself. If you register for an account right now at stance.com, you'll get 15% off your first purchase by using the promo code locked in. I'm sorry, that's locked on. Locked on at checkout. So 15% with locked on. If you do locked in, who the hell knows what's going to happen? Steph Curry will treat it, but that has nothing to do with this. Promo code locked on for 15% off your first purchase at stance.com. Stance.com. Enjoy the color and comfort of a life less ordinary with stance. You are locked on, Warriors. Your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Warriors. I'm Dieter Kurtenbach. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen of the day. We are free and available on all platforms. I want to talk about Kevon Looney just a little bit more because this is a guy who in the conversations that so many of us, including us here at Locked On Warriors, are having about big men and what the Warriors need to do and some of the problems that they've had with big men, problems being in air quotation marks. Kevon Looney's gotten... A little bit of shrapnel, you know, a little bit of friendly fire here. And having a big game from Kavan in Indianapolis, I think, does wonders for his reputation. And, and honestly, this reputation should have never been besmirched. This is a guy who has consistently been incredible for the Golden State Warriors over his short but very storied career at this point. He's not going to be an all-star. He's not going to get his number retired. At least I don't think he can hang around for another decade and then we might have a conversation. But he has been so pivotal to so many of the biggest moments and the biggest teams in Golden State Warriors and honestly, NBA history. And what he does is something that is so difficult to replicate. We talked on the Monday show uh, about DeAndre Ayton and what makes him special for the Phoenix Suns. And for me, it's not just the size and the grace and the athleticism. It's what he's able to do out on the perimeter. Rudy Gobert can defend the basket. I mean, Miles Turner can defend the basket. Some of these guys can knock down a three, too. Not Miles Turner against the Warriors, but some of these guys can do that. Uh, there's a lot of you know unicorns out there. But what makes DeAndre Ayton special is that he can both protect the rim and hang out on the perimeter and hold his own against guards. The Suns can switch everything and they don't have to worry about DeAndre Ayton turning into barbecue chicken because, well, he's seven foot and a bunch of guys out there with crazy, crazy handles are about to do work on him. He's fantastic. It's what makes him one of the biggest, if not, I think the biggest, best big man in the NBA. Uh, Kevon Looney's not that. Again, I, I, I do want to caveat this. I want to praise Kevon Looney, but the caveats need to be clear. Kevon Looney's not that guy. But think back to all of those series against the Houston Rockets in the playoffs, all those big games against the Cleveland Cavaliers too. Kevon Looney is a guy that the Warriors won on the perimeter. They still can switch everything on defense when he's in the game. And yes, he's a bit of an offensive liability at times. Uh, if the 10-foot jumper has fallen, you know it's going to be a good game for the Golden State Warriors. But what he does on the offensive end also affects winning. The issue comes when Draymond is not being in a, he's not in attack mode and when Kevon Looney is just sort of standing around because other guys are standing around. And that doesn't do him any good. This is not a guy who's got crazy hops. This is not a guy who's going to put his ass in somebody and do anything but run the split action and throw a nice pass. This is a guy who's out there to facilitate. This is a guy who plays point guard in a very strange and peculiar way. Draymond Green might have the ball, pass the ball, run the screens, all that stuff. Kevon Looney's out there to do dirty work. And Kevon Looney's a guy who will never complain. He'll never whine. I was just so happy to see him get fortunate with that offensive rebound as the ball bounced around about nine different pacers before it fell to him, but also to get what turned out to be the game-winning shot. And it was a tough shot, too. Nice shot by Kevon Looney amid a, a really nice game for him because he, he is one of the core players of this team. I, I, you think about Steph Curry, you think about Draymond Green. We're going to get Clay Thompson back here, uh, I, I believe, on the 20th against the Sacramento Kings. But one of the guys who's been around through most of these battles, most, not all, but most, is Kevon Looney. And he looks healthy. He looks as spry as he can be. 
it makes you, you know, kind of wonder what he could have been had his hips not turned to dust when he was 19, 20 years old. But my goodness, what a player he is and what an asset to the Warriors he is. I don't want to hear anyone pushing a trade rumor about trading Kevon Looney. The Warriors can't replace somebody who does that many sharp things. He's such a high IQ basketball player. And the thing that separates the Warriors from so many other teams, yes, Steph Curry, yes, Draymond Green, yes, the talent, but also the IQ. You're watching the game on Monday. You're seeing Andre Iguodala on the bench. Has nothing to do, but he's coaching that team up. You got Steve Kerr. Everybody's active, engaged. But Andre's first guy off the bench, yelling at his teammates, working with Steve Kerr, getting the right play. This is a team that has incredible mental facilities, and they use it on a most of the time, night in, night out basis. And even the guys who are inexperienced, don't really know what they're doing, are smart enough now to figure out what their roles are. For Jordan Poole, whose basketball IQ has come leaps and bounds and was already a sharp kid, but now uh, with the familiarity of the NBA level, he just he just looks the part and he's playing the part. He knows that he has to be a shot creator. Keep chucking, kid. Keep doing your thing. I'd love to see Steve Kerr use uh, Jordan Poole more in late game situations. And then Jonathan Kaminga, who got run against the Indiana Pacers for a team that just needed some juice. Frankly, he probably should have gotten more run because he was playing the five and Sabonis couldn't handle him. Uh, He's smart enough as a young player to know what he can and cannot do and is just trying to get to the basket and do athletic things. This is something that took Andrew Wiggins eight years to figure out. By the way, he's figured it out. Not his best game tonight. A little bit of sleepwalking. He gets a pass given how good he's been as of late. Don't make it a trend, but he gets a pass. Jonathan Kaminga figuring that out in year one. Just go be the most athletic guy on the floor. That doesn't mean going around and chucking and dribbling a bunch of stuff. If you get the ball, do an athletic thing. When you don't have the ball, do an athletic thing. Be moving. Be active. It's a motion offense. That doesn't mean you get to stand around. Uh, This Warriors team is so sharp, so smart. This was not their best performance against Indiana. I don't think they're going to give their best performance against the New York Knicks because of these travel circumstances and just the ugh of it all. Plus, you have the Steph Curry record situation. That's troubling in the sense that it's just weighing down on this team. But Boston, Toronto, this upcoming weekend, I'd love to see this team click it into high gear just once. Just go to town on somebody, absolutely run them off the floor. Both teams ripe for that kind of humiliation at this juncture. Uh, Toronto probably more ripe, but second end of a back-to-back with the Boston game having national TV implications. Uh, You can figure it out as you wish there. Uh, I I, I was just wildly impressed, again, as I usually am, by Kevon Looney, by the Warriors basketball IQ in this game, even though it wasn't their best game. And uh, I, I, I really do believe that that's the secret sauce of this team. And if we're talking secret sauce, I mean, it's Kevon Looney doesn't have a good nickname. We call him Loon Dog, whatever. Uh, secret sauce is a pretty good, pretty good way to describe Kevon Looney as well. Let me tell you about Boost Mobile. You listen to podcasts for the power of knowledge. You want to switch to Boost Mobile for the power of saving money. Because with Boost, you get the power of a free 5G phone so you can listen to all the latest episodes of your favorite podcasts, like, you know, Locked on Warriors. Uh, power of three unlimited data lines for 30 bucks a month per line so you and your family can harness all that brain power too. Man, you're really you're really building up this podcast thing, Boost Mobile. All the power of one of America's largest 5G networks so you can do it all at the speed of 5G. With all that money you'll save and knowledge you'll gain, just how powerful will you become? Andre Guadalla powerful or Kavan Looney powerful? Switch to Boost Mobile and find out. You'll get a free Samsung Galaxy A32 5G phone. That's Samsung A32 5G phone when you switch to one of America's largest 5G networks. More power to save. Boost Mobile. I do have to disclaim here that the free phone is limited to new customers and it's one per line. Additional restrictions apply. Offers and coverage not available everywhere or for all phones or networks. See BoostMobile.com for details. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. 
All right, that's Locked On Warriors for uh, this Tuesday. Warriors playing the Knicks tonight. Hopefully you're listening to this before the game. Fingers crossed on that one. We'll find out. Uh, we'll see if Steph Curry is going to play. We'll see if Steph Curry is going to break the record. Hopefully it will be a wonderful celebration and none of these travel issues will prove problematic. Uh, Cyrus will have you tomorrow. Uh, and again, thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen. We're free and available on all platforms. You should make your second listen of the day, Locked On Bets. It's hosted by your boy Q. It has incredible insight and analysis. From Lee Sterling, you can get locked on bets. Well, the same way that you got locked on Warriors. It's on YouTube. It's on all platforms. It's free. It's available. Go check it out. And until we talk again, stay golden.